What's up, guys? So, first of all, I want to apologize. Sorry. It's just the camera a little bit. I'm... Let's see about it. Okay, there we go. First of all, I want to apologize for the weird background, but I just didn't feel like making my background perfect today because it's my doorman also. That's my roommate's face, and believe it or not, that's one of the neater parts of the room right now. So, yeah, so, and also, just excuse screaming anything in the background because, again, I'm in a dorm right now. Anyway, so I know I'm normally, like, totally Lord of the Rings, Narnia, and, like, those are my two favorite things, but there's a lot of other movies that I really like, but I don't necessarily want to devote, like, a total video talking about, like, each movie that I love, because, again, there's some that I just think are really good, but they aren't my favorites. So I decided, and also I saw this other YouTuber that I love, um, Sean Chandler talks about, you should check him out, okay, he has tons of subscribers, but anyway, still, you never have too much business here on YouTube, but I, anyway, so he talked, did a thing where he went through his favorite movies, starting with each letter of the alphabet, and I thought, why not, that sounds like fun, and I'm sure some other people did it too, so, um, that's what I'm going to do today, all right. So, and I'll actually, I'm going to make a series of videos. Sorry, I have my computer and I feel like it's making the lighting weird. Hold on. I'm, this is so professional. <laughs> I am the most professional YouTuber ever. And this is why I have so many subscribers. <laughs> Does it make it better? I feel like it does. Anyway. Alright. So, let's just... Does that make it better? Anyway, let's just get right to it. Um, Alright. Starting with A. Avengers Endgame. So, I don't talk about Marvel. I've never really... Maybe I've mentioned it randomly in some of my videos. But I actually am a fan of the MCU. I got into it within the last, like, six months. I've actually gotten into, like, three or two or two big franchises within the past couple of months, six, like, year, um, both the MC, with being the MCU and Lord of the Rings. Um, I, I do love Marvel. It's really fun. Um, it's probably top three franchises for me. I mean, like, Lord of the Rings, Narnia, Marvel. It's not, like, the best thing ever, but I do love it. I do love Marvel. Um, MCU. And I will say, I haven't seen any non-MC movies except Big Hero 6, which I don't know if you count that, but I haven't seen that. Anyway, but Avengers Endgame, of course, you know, the big wrap-up to the Infinity Saga. Um, it is so much fun. And also, like, not necessarily, even, not, even completely fun, just so emotional, so exciting, so cool. Um, <laughs> the portal sequence being the obvious stand if you, if you haven't seen it, I'm sorry, but I feel like, okay, I'm just going to say a spoiler alert, but I feel like pretty much everyone has seen it. It is so fun. It is so cool. It is so well done. And I mean, the, the humor, it's great. Um, and, um, yeah, I don't know. It's just really good. Uh, runner up just for these, two runner ups for these. Um, one is another MCU film, Ant-Man, which I think it's so underrated. It doesn't get enough love. It needs some more love. Uh, granted, I am a super my shirt. I am a huge Friends fan, and I love Paul Rudd. I love Mike and Paul Rudd, played by Paul Rudd. And of course, he plays Ant Man. He's amazing. And I also love Evangeline Lilly. That's one thing that makes me think I might like The Hobbit a little bit, is because of Evangeline Lilly. I love her. Um, she's amazing. Um, but yes, I love Ant Man. Um, it's so. It's fun, it's silly, Ant-Man and the Wasp is also really good, <laughs> and fun, it's silly, but it's just cool, and again, Michael Douglas, it's like the whole cast is just the best, it's like, an it's like the best cast, I love it, um, and anyways, another runner-up would be Anna Green Gables, I love Anna Green Gables, it's just, it's a good movie, I like, well, that's nostalgia talking. I watched it so, all the time with my mom, with my grandparents, all the time as a kid. Um, I've actually, and just because of like some stuff that happens in my life, happened with me in my life with my grandparents, which I might make a video talking about 
I have to say it again, um, with my grandma, um, just the little memories are really important to me and that's something I love. Um, so it's just a really good movie, but again, Avengers comes out. Like, pretty much everything, Endgame wins. Um, Endgame wins the game. Um, so going with B, I'm going to go with Beyond the Mask. Beyond the Mask is such a good movie. I, if you don't know this, it's like an ND movie. It was made four or five years ago. I actually don't know when it was made. Um, I'm not actually sure, which is weird because I'm such a big fan of the movie. It's, it actually has, kind of stars John Rice davies as a villain, which he's actually really good at playing villains. Um, Gimli is my favorite character that he plays, but he's really good at playing villains. He's really, just really good at playing like this evil businessman, but, or mercenary because it's set in the 1700s. It's just a great historical fiction piece. Really good casting. Um, really just fun, um, but really well done action. Um, it's actually the only Christian movie that I actually would include on my list. My list has changed. I don't know. I never really had like Christian a lot of Christian movies on my list. But it's like so I guess that's not true. Say so that it's the only Christian movie on my list, like that's a big deal, like that's changed. But it's the only Christian movie that I'm still like, yes, this is good. And is it perfect? No, but it's not only as perfect. Except when Lord of the Rings. But it is so good, it is so well done. There's nothing about it that I don't like. I don't think I really had any runner ups for this one. Because I don't think there's any MC movies that start with a B. Um, for C, I'm going to go with Cinderella 2015. Yeah, no, not the live, not the um, animated version, the live action version directed by Kenneth Branagh. <coughs> Sorry. Um, it is so good um i loved i was actually just watching it last night and watching some special features about it and they said they wanted they kept the core elements the same like the glass slipper the ball blah 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 there's a few things that they kept the same sorry but sorry about that but they didn't worry as much but they wanted to change it make it really their own and the biggest thing was they wanted to make the prince not a stuffed shirt. They wanted to have a reason why Cinderella or Ella would be attracted to this guy. And I mean, who wouldn't be attracted to Richard Madden? Let's just be real. He's really good looking. He's really handsome. Those big blue eyes, those beautiful blue eyes. I'm a sucker for blue eyes and brown hair, apparently. Um, because it's just fun. It's great. Um, but I love, 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 love the movie. Um... It's elegant, it's vibrant, it's well acted, um, and again, they change just enough, whether it's, um, well, they obviously brought in some elements from the original fairy tale, like the fact that her name isn't really Cinderella, because I was like, why the heck, why in the world would parents name their kids Cinder, daughter Cinderella, and is that's what it sounds like it's, her name is in the Disney movie, but in the other, in every other version, in most versions, her real name is Ella, and she gets called Cinderella because she sleeps in the cinders. I thought that was just perfect. Honestly. Just perfect idea that they brought that back in. And even like some of the elements, like, well, like how they met before the ball, it's just great. Um,. The fact that the prince wanted the ball and everyone there was perfect. Um, the little bit of political tension and um, also the elements like with his dad and his relationship with his dad were really cool. And again, perfect casting. Kate Blanchett is a stepmother. It was actually kind of funny. I was having a conversation with a friend the other day, one of my hall, someone on my hall the other day. Um, about how Kate Blanchett is really good at playing villains. And I said, well, except in Lord of the Rings, of course she doesn't. But then I thought about it a little more, like, she's actually, well, Gladriel is creepy, at least. I have mixed feelings about Gladriel. If you don't, if you love her, good for you. Go ahead, love her. 
Um, I don't. And again, like, when I was watching it with Seth, who's in my videos, who... I haven't really talked about, like, how we know each other. He's, like, a really good friend of mine. Um, and his wife is one of my best... Is probably my, is my best friend. So we say sis, I say sister and brother-in-law. So if I refer to them as that, that's why. Um, just because that's what we act like. And they feel like siblings. And I don't actually have siblings of my own. Anyway, sorry. Um, you know, it's not going to get any better because we're going to be in a dorm. And someday... I'm gonna have, hopefully, I'll get married and have kids, and then if I'm still making these videos, you'll hear my kids screaming in the videos, making noise in the videos, so hey, practice for that. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, where was I going? Oh, um, bad girls, like I say. I have mixed feelings about her. Anyway, like I said, my sister, that the one part that she does not like, well, there's a few parts she doesn't like in the movies, but the one part where she made my brother-in-law, made Seth fast forward through, was... Um, the part where Gladiel's like tempting herself to take the ring, which I watched through it. It is creepy. It's not the worst thing in the world, but it's creepy. Anyway, so moving right along to D is Daddy's Home 2. Now, this was actually really hard. I had to decide if I wanted to go with Daddy's Home or Daddy's Home 2. I think I like Daddy's Home 2 a little bit better. Um, granted, I mean, the dynamics make more sense if you've seen the first one, but someone could explain the plot to the first one in like five minutes, in like a couple minutes, and then you can watch the second one. It's so funny, and here's the thing about like I love the dynamic of the first one with Mel Gibson, not Mel Gibson, he's in the second one with Mark Wahlberg and um, Will Ferrell. Will Ferrell's probably one of my favorite actors. I mean, I love Elf. He's hilariously funny. He's amazing. I also, I don't know, I loved the Curious George movie as a kid. And he's actually, I didn't know this earlier, he's a man with a yellow hat in that one. He's great. Um, he's just great. He's a great actor. He's funny. And Mark Malik Wahlberg is another one of my favorite actors. Um, he's so funny. But he's so serious. And like the dynamics, but the opposites, comedy, comedy of opposites is double. Because you have their dads coming in. So you have Mel Gibson as Mark, Mark Mel Gibson as Mark Wahlberg's dad, and oh, sorry, there. Um, you have Mel Gibson as Mark Wahlberg's dad. I always forget his name, but um, whoever they got to play Will Ferrell said it's just perfection. It's perfect casting, and some of the lines are so good. Like, let's keep it all back. Get it all back in the harbor. Yeah, we're not. I'm not harboring. Are you harboring? Okay. Yeah, we were. And then later. later let's just keep it all back in the harbor get it all back get it all back in the harbor it's so good it's like one of my favorite it's so the comedy is so perfect the one-liners some of the stuff that Brad gets into the way they get into trouble it's hilarious I can I'm like crying laughing some parts of it it's so good and obviously runner-up is the second one um is the first one they're both so good it's hard for me to choose because they both have such they all have such really good slapstick slap stick scenes you might say do you like slapstick comedy cat Kate? yes but it has to be quality and if someone told me you can either have sarcastic humor or slapstick humor for the rest of your life i pick sarcastic there's no contest i pick sarcastic but i do enjoy slapstick to a certain degree but i prefer sarcastic and honestly, this movie, these, both these movies are a good blend of both. Um, going with, moving right along to E, I'm going to go with Ever After, the second Cinderella-style representation on this list. Um, this movie is, takes, to me, what they did in the 2015 version, except this one was made first, and just notches it up, that they spend time together before the ball, they... The historical setting. I really don't have any criticisms of this movie. I mean, I love Drew Barrymore. I think the only thing I would criticize is the pants that these men wear. Special. No. No. You can't wear skin tight pants, guys. It is gross. It is disgusting. But other than that, it's a great movie. It's my only criticism of it, of it, of it is Prince Henry's pants. 
literally my only criticism. It's great. It's kind of funny, but it's just, you really feel the emotion. You get attached to these characters. And just some of the scenes are just amazing. The music is beautiful. It's, it's just like the best. I love that movie. Um, so it's great. Moving right along, then we get to F. Now, I am totally cheating. I'm not going to pick my favorite of the Lord of the Rings movies as a representation. They're just going to be with their corresponding letter. So, F is the Fellowship of the Ring. What else could it be? Oh, my goodness. I love this movie. It is amazing. Like, I have a really reason why I'm cheating and including all of Lord of the Rings. A, because you couldn't have, like, one without the other. Second of all, it's just, I can't pick my, between these. They're all like right here. I always say the least best to the best. Thank you, Sean Chandler talks about for, and if, I don't know if you invented that phrase, but I love it. Least best to the best. Um, and you know what? I'm not going to go into a lot of time talking about it because I already did a whole video talking about my review of the movie when I first saw it. So I'm going to put a timestamp up whichever direction that'll be. Um, so I'm going to put the link to that video and just go watch that if you want to know what I think about Lord of the Rings, about the Fellowship. Um, so I actually don't have a movie for G. I don't know how I don't. I just don't. So if you have a G movie, a movie that starts with G, that you think is great, comment it down below. I will definitely consider watching it. Going right along to H, Hidden Figures, another historical movie. And arguably, yes, this is a better movie than Beyond the Mask. It's better made. Um, I think I just connected with Beyond the Mask a little bit better. But then anyway, so if, to me, Hidden Figures does such... Oh, this movie. It is so good. To me, they do such a good job, especially with all the civil rights issues and Black Lives Matter that we're dealing with right now. Oh, that was weird. Um, they address it without being preachy by telling a true, they tell a true story and you empathize with these characters. You feel that what they're going through and they make progress and they don't, you know, the, a politician doesn't come in and save them. They prove themselves. And it's just so good. It's so amazing. And actually, funny story about the first time I watched this. It's, one, it's a hilarious story. So, my, so Seth, my brother-in-law, and his parents are some of my parents' best friends. Um, we didn't grow up together because there's such a name between us, but we're, our families have been friends for like 10 years probably. Um, it's, our families have been, our families have been friends for a really long time, but like he and my parents, his parents and my parents have been like really, really good friends for like six, seven, ten years. Um, and so one time my parents had to be out of town from like a set, they were going to leave really early Sunday morning. I didn't have a driver's license yet. So they asked if I could go stay at Seth's parents' house. Um, I said parents if I could stay at their house until, um, just because they were going to be gone and so that I could go to church on Sunday morning. I'm like, oh, sure. So I went over there Saturday and went home with them Saturday night from this party that we were at and we were just, um, and anyway, so I went to church with them. I went, because we go to the same church. Let me clarify that. Important to tell, we go to the same church. I'm sorry if I didn't clarify that. And then we went home, went back to their house, and we watched, and after a while, we decided to watch Hidden Figures. And it is so good. And we were watching, and we're getting all, ah, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? What's going to happen? I do not like how the lighting is working, but that's okay. It'll be fine. Um, I feel like it's, something's flickering over here. Anyway. Um, but, anyway, so we get to the part, if you... This only makes sense if you've seen the movie, and I feel like a lot of people have, because it's, it's pretty well known, I think, and it's like six years old, maybe? not six years old, it's like four or five years old. Um, 
So we get to um, the part where there's like the space shuttle part, not the space shuttle, whatever it is. We get to like the big exciting part and we're like, ooh, we're getting all into it and it's really intense. And then we think we hear something. It sounds like, like that, but we're like, oh, well, must be hearing things. Then after a little bit, we hear it again. And we're like, oh, okay, well, and so Doug pauses the movie and he's like, and then the door opens into the basement, it's your son! And it was hilarious. We, and we had to come, so we came upstairs because we were in the basement and we're like, oh, sorry, we were into the intense part of computers and we didn't hear you. And so anyway, it, and they were literally just stopping by to show off their new buddy. It was great. Um, it was funny. So anyway, I love that movie. I love Hidden Figures. It is probably, like, maybe my top, one of my top ten movies. Definitely not in the top five, but it's a good movie. I don't watch it as much as I should, but I really do like it. Um, that's what's making it flicker right there. Um, so now for, I, I'm going to go with Iron Man. Iron Man is, I, I should have, I should have said this when I did the C. Pretty much all Captain America movies can be tossed in as brothers up to Cinderella. I love Captain America, but Iron Man is also one of my favorite MCU movies, one of my favorite MCU characters. I will say his second and third movies are not very good, but his first one, not as good, but his first one is amazing. Um, I love Iron Man. And it's just funny, it's well acted, Robert Downey Jr. is amazing. Like I said, I don't know myself, I'm going to do videos, I'm also going to do a video about my favorite actors, so I'm going to show you the alphabet. So, um, in that moment, and that's what I can talk about, how much I love Robert Downey Jr. Um, but Robert Downey Jr., amazing. Gwyneth Paltrow, amazing. Amazing. So, it's just perfect, it's wonderful. Um, going with... I'm going to go with Jumanji, Welcome to the Jungle. This is just a fun, perf another perfectly cast movie. I don't know if I have, I have made the comment. I was asking my mom one day if I would, if she would rather watch a movie or a TV show. I'd rather watch a TV show. A TV show. With a weaker script, but perfect casting, or a, perf a great script, but not perfect casting, like a really good, bad cast, good cast, bad script, or not gr weaker script, weaker casting, stronger script. And she said, probably the stronger cast. And I said, yeah, because a good cast, a great cast, like could make any script better. Like not the greatest script, good. Like, for example, like the show Friends. Now, granted, it's well written. But, like, there's some plot lines that aren't as well written, some scripts that aren't as well written, but the, you don't notice it as much, in my, at least I don't, because the casting is so perfect. The cast is on the top of their game. So, but, and then there's some shows that are just bad at both, but if they can make a good script better, but if it's a good script, a bad script, better. But if it's a good script and a bad cast, well, they're going to screw it up. I mean, again, like, look, I don't know. But I mean, again, you want both, ideally, but if you had to pick one or the other. Um, I mean, like, I don't know if there's really an MCU example of this, of, like, a bad script that the cast makes better. Because the more poorly written movies have a bad script, you know, don't, aren't as good. And they were like, well, the cast, in the casting couldn't make this better. Anyway, that's an aside, um, but anyway, Jumanji is so good, Jumanji Welcome to the Jungle, I love the humor, like the out of, fish out of water comedy, I love seeing Dwayne Johnson playing a nerdy high school boy, and Jack Black playing a dorky thing, a sissy, like a snooty teenage girl, yes! Yes, 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 yes. There is nothing that I don't like about that. There's nothing that I don't love about that. It is amazing. I have, I, I laugh really hard every time I watch this. It's so good. And I mean, yeah, the generic 
Is it a generic quest? Is it a template? Is it a template? Yeah. But is it perfect? Yes. And I think Jumanji The Next Level is honestly another movie that I really like. It's just not nearly as good. Um, not as good. But there's some lines that are just as good. I mean, like, I don't know. There's just some lines that I don't like in the first one. Like, the first one has better action, I would say more consistent comedy that's hilarious but I mean there's some lines that are like in the second one that I love like um anyway you just have to watch the movie but there's so many lines in that that I love I go back and forth I mean I love Welcome to the Jungle better more but I like it better but they're both really good anyway now we come to K now this one I'm gonna go with a pure well not pure because I actually do think it's a good movie Nostalgia pick with Kit Kittredge and American and American Girl. Now this movie, sorry, um, it's dead. This movie, oh my word, <laughs> this movie is so silly, but it's so fun at the same time, and it's nostalgia. Like I said, like I honestly. I remember how I got this movie. This is one of the DVDs, like, I mean, I have some childhood movies on this list. I mean, actually, I think I only have one or one other childhood, a couple of, a few childhood movies on my list. But I vividly remember, I was, again, I was just thinking about this when I was making the list. I'm like, how did I get the Kate Kitchers movie? Oh, I remember now. So, um, when I, I grew up in a rural area, um, and so we had to drive, like, over an hour to go shopping. Uh, well, not to go shopping, but to get, like, to stock up, to go to Sam's Club and Walmart and stuff. Um, so, and again, I didn't go to daycare or anything. My mom was a stay-at-home mom, so she had to take me with her. And because if I was a good girl, I got a treat. And I have to ask, I don't know if my mom would remember this, because I have the better memory, but maybe if I probe her enough, if I, you know, if I, if I frame it right, maybe she'll remember it. Um... But we were shopping, and we were at Menards, of all places. And it was, like, the end of the day. I was tired, and I was forcing myself to be cheerful because if I wasn't cheerful, I lost ice cream. This is why I need to lose weight. I love ice cream. Um, I loved ice cream, like, my entire life. Um, so, um, anyway, so we get to Menards. We're at Menards, of all places. I hate Menards, Okay. I hate the smell. I hate this aisle. There's nothing about Menards that I like. If you like it, fine. Look, some people don't like Old Navy. Some people don't like Walmart. Some people don't like Target. Some people don't like Menards. And I also don't like Walmart either. But that's an aside. Um, anyway. Ugh. Anyway, like I said, I am a huge fan of Anyway, so anyway, blah, blah, blah. so anyway, we went there, and I had think I'd read some of the American Girl books, and I wanted the Kid Kitchen. No, I, we had seen gotten the Kid Kitchen movie from the library, and it was really good. Um, so we saw, and my mom's like, "Oh man," and she's like, "Okay, well, we, we will get it. This will be your treat for the day, and if you keep up your good attitude, we can watch it tonight." So that's what we did. And I don't know if I actually have the DVD anymore. I might not. I have to ask my mom. If she's found it because she was just cleaning out our old house and she found it because if we do I want it back again. I want to buy it again because I love that movie. It's one of my favorite movies. Um, Abigail Breslin. It's not perfect casting, but Abigail Breslin. Stanley Tucci. I love Stanley Tucci. I love him. Ow. I love him so much. Coming along with Alice, probably already guess, is The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe again. I'm not going to go a lot into this because I've talked about it in detail. I'm going to put my video up there. Whichever side it is, I always forget. Um, I was gonna, I'm going to put the video up there talking about the movies and why I like them or don't like them. What I love about them. I think I pretty much straight up praise The Lion of the Wardrobe. I don't think there's any I, any criticism of that. Um, so, obviously because it's my favorite. One of my favorite movies was my favorite movie of all time until The Lord of the Rings happened. And then I'm like, okay, I like Lion of the Wardrobe better. Um, but Lord of the Rings better, but it's still a good movie, and honestly, it's not even the script, it's the director, again, 
Peter Jackson is a better director than Andrew Adamson, and also there's more material to work with, and I mean, I'm an adult, so... Plots resonate with me as an adult. So anyway. But, that's pretty much it. Going with M, my big fat Greek wedding. And this is another one! I had a really hard time picking if I liked the sequel or the original better. And I ended up going with the first one, but the second one is a very close runner up. This is just a good movie. My Big Fat Greek Wedding 2 was actually the first PG-13 rated movie that I saw in theaters, except Courageous. Um, which to me, I don't know why it was PG-13. I don't count that as PG-13 because it could have been a PG. It was not that bad. I was not even scared by it as a 10, 8, as a sensitive, like, 10 year old. And now I'm just like, why was this PG-13? That was weird. But anyway, nice to side. The Big Fat Creek Wedding 2 deserved to be PG-13, and it was actually the first PG-13 rated movie that I saw. So, that's just kind of a fact about me. Um, and a fact about Kate. But yeah, I love, I love my Big Fat Creek Wedding movies. They're so fun. Great casting. John Corbett is amazing. Um, and I mean, it's quotable. Like, I have literally used like dos, tres, dos, no, I guess that's more Italian, not Greek, no butter, no jam, or we nice to them, and they look at us like we from the zoo, oh, it's so good, that's just like, it's, it's great, of course, then the second one, you have the line, I, conversation, I want you to propose to me, I did that, 50 years ago, not, really you said i go i'm going to america you coming or not oh it's so funny it's like i love that movie um it's just great it's so good i love it so much i love it so much anyway now we come to n national treasure that's actually my third favorite movie of all time like lord of the rings <clears throat> narnia Language more jump, National Treasure. Um, ugh, I love National Treasure. So basically, if you want to know like what I the pendulum swings, and you'll see this when we get to pee. The pendulum swings between my favorite movies are basically epic fantasy, slightly less epic fantasy, but still really good. High end, high epic fantasy, like adult. Well, it's not, it's not very, it's not Game of Thrones, but like so good. Um, and then you have, like, right around here, so then you have, like, kind of historical fiction, and then campy, sonar sarcastic ridiculousness, but still really fun, and it's so good, I love Natural Treasure, it's so funny, even when you get to my top five character list, I literally have Lord of the Rings and Narnia characters, and then tagged on at the end is Riley Cole from this movie, I love him so much, I love the casting, I love everything about this movie, it is so cool. It is so cool. So if you know any, and it's like Indiana Jones basically. And you can say, how do you not like it? How do you not like this as much as Indiana Jones? I love Indiana Jones. I love. I haven't actually seen all the Indiana Jones movies. I loved the one that I. I don't. I didn't like Temple of Doom very much, but Raiders of the Lost Ark is amazing. I've heard Last Crusade is amazing. I love. But Indiana Jones, but National Treasure. It's just like it's. I like it better. It's funny here. It's funny to me. It's great. And this is one thing that's interesting. I watch, we watched this with my parents. With, I watched this with my mom and dad. My dad wasn't completely went over it. My mom loves it. Um, and she was like, um, I've never been a big Nicolas Cage fan. But in this movie, he's amazing. He's great. And my mother, she's my, my mother is the one who doesn't like Lord of the Rings. So she's won over by a franchise, like, by an actor, by one movie, then you know that it's really good. He's great in this movie. He's amazing. And I love National... I love, I love... I love... I love... I love... I love... This movie. It's so funny. I love the sarcastic humor. It's quotable to a certain degree. It's great. The chemistry. Oh, and yeah, Sean Bean. This is, like, the one movie where I, I've seen Sean Bean in that he does... That I know Sean Bean is in that I've heard he doesn't... That I know he doesn't die in. He does go to prison, but anyway, and it's a mystery. It's a little bit of a, like, it's kind of a, like, a, not really, a, a little bit of, like, an undercover 
aesthetic, spy aesthetic to a little bit of a degree, not strong. Um, it's, but it's their historical kind of conspiracy theory, but like not bad. And they do a really good job talking about the Masons in a way that is not like glorifying them and not saying like, oh, they're great. They're talking about it as an element of our history, which it absolutely is because so many of our founding fathers were Masons. And I think they do a great job of that. It's just great. Um, so now we're going to, oh, I didn't have a lot of options that I really love for O, so I'm going to go with 101 Dalmatians. It's fun. It's great. I love the comedy. I love the idea that, like, the dogs consider the animal humans their pets because I'm pretty sure that's how dogs think. It's just great. It was good. I loved it. Um, P, The Princess Bride. This is another one of my favorite movies. Like I said, high fantasy. Slightly less high-end epic fantasy, but still really epic. Um, histor goofy ridiculous. Historical fiction. Goofy ridiculousness. Um, and I mean, like I said, I love this movie. It's on the bottom of my top five, but it's still in my top five. It's so This is by far the movie that I quote the most. Like, I'm not around, like, because you can't... When do you quote Lord of the Rings? I mean, you can. I was quoting it randomly sometimes, but... Like, potatoes, boy, I mash them, stick them in a stew. Use the quotes, in, but not in conversation. Like, how often can you say? I mean, you, I can say, well, I'll have to decide what to do with the time that it's given to me. But if you say that in normal conversation, people are like, yeah, you're weird. You can slip Princess Bride quotes into conversation all the time. It's great. Like, I, there was a stretch of years right after I watched this movie, or stretch of like, probably months, where I was saying, as you wish, if not on a daily basis, a weekly basis, multiple times a week. I was saying, um, you can say as you wish. You can say it'll, it would take a miracle. You can use these quotes so much. It's great. Um, again, I mean, and like, honestly, like my favorite line, or inconceivable. That was one that I think I said a lot for a long time. And you can't use it as much, but of course the best line, one of the best lines is, Hello, my name is Inigo Montoya. You killed my father. Prepare to die. And I mean, there's so much. It's so quotable. It's so fun. Um, before I started dyeing my hair, I got told I looked like Buttercup. Which I think I kind of, I see it, but I know someone who legit looks like Buttercup. Exactly. Like, she could be Robin Wright's, like, sister or something. It's great. Anyway. Q, I don't have one Q, run for Q, and again, I say comment below, but if it's The Quiet Place or The Quiet Place 2, don't even bother to comment, I don't like horror movies, so don't even bother, okay? I will not watch them, you, there will be no way, there's no way anyone is going to convince me to watch either of those movies, so don't even waste your time with commenting, because I will not watch them. Sorry. If you like them, great. If they make you happy, great. I don't like to be scared. So I will not be watching those. Um, R as Return of the King, unarguably, if I was forced into a corner to pick my favorite of the Lord of the Rings franchise, I would pick Return of the King. Um, but it would be hard. This movie, again, I'm not going to go a lot into it because I can. I will put my timestamp put up in the corner. I will put the, not the, I keep saying time stamp, but it's not right. I will put the link to the card to the video that I, where I talk in detail about Return of the King there. Um, because it's just, it's so good. There's so many lines to see, and one of my favorite scenes in the trilogy is in this movie, which is Put Aside the Ranger. Come be comfortable, you were born to be. I love that line. I actually, I don't know if you guys be able to see it, but that, the, the seat picture of Aragorn in that scene with my, with that quote in middle earth font is literally my lock screen is literally my wallpaper for my computer i'm just not gonna show you right now but i do have my computer down here because i'm reading out the list um so i <laughs> love this movie my only criticism of it is aragorn isn't in it enough but, but again no movie there's no such thing as too much aragorn he never overstays his welcome 
if they wanted to do, like I have said, if you want to do like a TV show that, first of all, young Aragorn and some of his adventures as a ranger and put Orlando Bloom in there, if you can get them back together, I don't know if Viggo Mortensen would do it, but please, Viggo Mortensen, do it, do it if they ask you! Oh my goodness, that'd be amazing. But I love, I love Return of a King. I love Return of a King! I love all these movies, like I said, I'm not going to go into detail about everything I love about it, because I made a video about that already! So I'm gonna put it up there. Just go watch that, please. Please, please, please. Sorry, I'm weird. Um, basically, I tell everyone, I tell my classmates and my friends that I hang out with, they say, just be aware around 8, 30, 9 o'clock at night. And I don't know this name, but there's certain points of the day where snarky Kate comes out and it, how early she comes out starts early. It gets more and more earlier in the week. Later, the later in the week we go, the earlier she comes up because she gets tired. Anyway, um, so, S. I'm gonna go with The Sound of Music. The hills are alive with the sound of music. I probably butcher that. But I love that movie. Again, this is a nostalgia. I watched this with my grandparents, with my grandma, all the time as a kid. It is so good. It's so fun. It's not fun, actually. It's just good. Jill Andrews is really good. I love. She's one of my favorite actresses, honestly. Um, I think I'm gonna talk about favorite actresses. She'll be on. I don't know. I have uh, yeah, I don't remember if she's on the list for Jay. Um, but she's so good. I love her so much, and I love this movie. Um, it's one of the straight musicals that I'm a big fan of. I'm not actually. This is may surprise you. I don't know. Maybe it doesn't. I'm not the biggest musical fan. I don't mind musicals if it fits the story, but if it's like, let's stop the story for five minutes while you, while we sing you another song, that's no bueno. No, no bueno. But, um, I do like, but this is one musical, again, I think it's nostalgia, but it's really good. I enjoy it. It's fun. It's not, again, it's not my favorite of the movies, but it's favorite movie of all time, but I do love the sound of music. Um, with T, I'm going to go with, this is actually not the first, only. Oh, First purely T title, first purely, pure first letter title, but anyway, is The Two Towers. Now, again, like I said, I battle it out which of the three, especially, well, more so with Two Towers and Return of the King, which one I like better, but I love all three of them pretty equally. I love Two Towers. Again, not gonna go in depth because um, it's. I'm going to put the video that I made right after I saw it with my review of it up, up here somewhere. This movie is so good. Again, I think my favorite speech in the trilogy is in this movie. And it's There's Some Good in This World, Mr. Frodo, and Worth Fighting For. This is the movie that probably that brought tears to my eyes with that speech. It's so good. Um, but again, every movie has a quote that I'm like, yes, yes, and it, this is like one of my favorite quotes of all time. Anyway, I love Two Towers. With you, we have the second animated reference on this list, but this is by far, I do love this, this movie, like, oh, 100 animations I like, I enjoy, I just haven't seen a lot of movies there with, oh, and it could be possibly be dethroned easier, easier but up, but the word you, I don't, Think I could ever like a movie as much as I like this one, which is Up. I love Up. Up is so fun. It's so sweet. It's funny. It's it's the best. It is my favorite and one of my favorite animated movies of all time, if not my favorite. Definitely my favorite Pixar movie. Um it's so good. It's so great. Oh my word. It's so wonderful. Ed Ajner. Rest in peace, Ed Asner. Um, I love Ed Asner so much. Um, I love Up. Now we come to B, which is Voyage of the Dawn Treader. Again, I still love Voyage of the Dawn Treader. When I say I love, like, when I'm critical of it, I'm not saying I don't like it. I'm just saying it's not nearly as good as the book. So it's just so good. It's so good. Um, and again, I've already talked about the movies. And I'll have a links back there when 
I talk about all three of the movies in there. So anyway, with W, we have What About Bob? Oh my goodness, this movie. I've only seen it a few times. This is the first PG-13 rated movie that I saw, period. Except, like I said, Courageous, but I don't count Courageous. Um, I saw this um, at a youth group, event of all things. Um, <laughs> so this is one of the funnier, yeah, it was funny. Um, and it was also the first time I heard SOB. Seriously, the first time I ever heard it, I heard that phrase. And I mean, there's some lines that are just hilarious. And I watched it again a couple, like, a, probably a few weeks, like, three weeks ago, and it's so good. And then X and Y, I don't have more than four, so there we go. And Z, Zootopia. I love this anime movie. This is another one of my anime movies I absolutely love. It's just funny. It's great. And it addresses, again, some prejudice issues that are really good. And they do such a good job with it. It's so good. I love Zootopia. Um... Yeah, it's awesome, and honestly, like, I don't know, I, I watched this other, this other YouTube channel, Cinema Therapy, you should check them out, they're amazing, if you don't already watch them, you should check them out, they're amazing, I love them, but they actually did a video talking about implicit bias and use Utopia to talk about it, and that really opened my eyes, like, wow, they really address some issues, but again, not being preachy, kind of going back to, like, what I said about hidden figures, it's great, I love Zootopia, anyway, so yeah, that is my list, and again, if you have anything for 8, for G, Q, as long as it's not one of the Quiet Place movies, X and Y, let me know in the comments below. And, yeah, horror movie, as long as they aren't a horror movie, I will be at least be interested in them. I'll think about checking them out. Anyway, that is what it is. That is my list. And, um, yeah, so what are your, some of your favorite movies in them that start with each letter of the alphabet? Um, and have you, do you, have you see any of these movies? Do you agree with me about them? What do you agree with, think about, like, which one of, like, the one, the two sets that I did, Daddy's Home 2, Daddy's Home, the Big Fat Creek Wedding movies, that I said, which one is better? And do you think nostalgia is actually a really a factor in how much you like a movie? Even if it's not, like, the best movie of all time, you can be like, you still like it because it's a childhood nostalgia for you. Or just any nostalgia, like, maybe it's a movie you watched when you were dating your spouse, and... You still love that movie, even though you know it's not that great because you watch it together all the time. I don't know. Anyway, let me know in the comments below which what you think, and I will see you guys later. Bye, guys.